Well, hello, hello, hello. You ready to go to work? Ready to do this? Oh, what, you're not? All right, go press pause, go grab a handful of grapes and get bound back here. Rest you guys, let's do this. Let's get ready for this test. All right, unit four, we're gonna talk about, looks like a lot of fraction work here and some equations. Oh yeah, yeah, we got this. All right, let's, let's just get right into it. This looks yummy. All right, for number one, we're gonna determine if each one of these are greater than or less than one. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little um, tips and tricks on this one, okay? So listen up, listen up, watch this. So if I have eight divided by four, Okay, you have eight things divided by four, um, that, your answers are gonna be more than one, right? Because it's like eight fourths. So it's gonna be greater than. If I have four divided by eight, that's gonna be less than one, right? Because I have four things divided by eight people. And look at this, it's really dependent on that first number. So if that first number is bigger than the second number, it's gonna be bigger than one. If my first number is less than the second number, then it's gonna be smaller than one. So when I go look at these quick different things, if I just look at the first number and determine if it's bigger or smaller, it's gonna tell me. So that first number is bigger than the second number. It's bigger, so this is going to be greater than one, much greater. The second one, you know what, these are really similar. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be close to one. Second one, 4.7. You know what, these are also real similar, so this is gonna be close. So these will be close and that'll be close. That second one, two divided by 7,000. Two is much lower. So it's lower, which means it is going to be smaller than one. I have like two things and I'm dividing it in over 7,000 pieces. They're gonna be tiny, right, right? Okay, less than one, much less than one. All right, for E, my first number is bigger than the second number, so it's going to be greater than 1. And the F, the first number is smaller, so it is going to be, um, yeah, the first number is smaller, so it's going to be smaller than 1. I hope that techniques help a little bit. Yeah, yeah, let's keep going. All right, number 2, what do we got here? Um, one fifth gallon of orange juice, that seems important. Three equal size bottle, how much orange juice is in each bottle? Okay, so I've got three bottles, so I have 1.5 divided into three bottles. All right, 1.5 divided by three. You know what that actually is? 1.5 is really like half of three. So 1.5 divided by three is one half. So how much orange juice is in each bottle? There's a half, half a gallon. Yeah, half a gallon. Okay, a large jar of 100 marbles is divided into five small jars. So I have 100 marbles, dividing it into five jars. So 100 divided by five, I know that looks like a fraction, but remember fractions are division problems. So 100 divided by five is going to be 20 uh, marbles. All right, two shirts are split equally among four brothers, so I have 20 shirts. So I have 20 shirts sharing, splitting it. I hope they don't have an extra one. They have to tear it in half. But maybe torn, torn, torn shirts are cool nowadays. I don't know. So 20 divided, oh good, everybody gets five. No ripping up extra shirts. Priya has $35 to spend on rides. Okay, $35 to spend. Um, each ticket costs $3.50. All right, let's multi multiplicate the problem. Each ticket. So each ticket is $3.50 times, um, I do not know how many tickets, but it's a, a total of $35. All right, so that's my multiplication problem. If you know your multiplication problem, you know your division problem because whatever your multiplication problem ends with, your division problem starts with. So 35 divided by 350 is X. So how many 350s are in 35? Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are 10 of them. Oh goodness. So X equals 10. 10 tickets. All right, let's keep going. Next page. Yay, look at us go. Select all of them. That must mean there's more than one, so be careful of that one. So let's see. So we have 15 divided by one and one fourth. So 15 is what I have. I'm gonna remember that. That is what's being split up. It's what I have. And it looks like this is going to be either the amount of groups I can make it in or the size of the group. That's usually what the two things are running into. 
So the first number is what I have, my, or my total. And my second number is either how many groups or the size of the group. Let's see which one fits that situation. I have a group of friends. Okay, that's a good sign, okay. There are 15 sub sandwiches and each get a fourth of a sub. Looks like we're dividing that 15 subs into one and a fourth. How many friends? Yep, that works. We got a ding ding. Diego earns $15 per hour. He works for one and a fourth. How much money did he earn? Okay, that's a multiplication problem. I'm gonna take 15 times one and one fourth, so it's not that one. Okay, Lynn makes 15 meatloafs. Okay, little loaves of meat. That's kind of fun. All right, 15 meatloafs. And they take one and one fourth hours to cook. How long does it take to cook? Oh, another multiplication problem. This one's 15 times that. Okay, that's another multiplication. A waiting pool holds 15 gallons of water, so that's my total. It's a good sign. Every bucket holds that much, okay? How many buckets? That totally works. It's a division problem there. Company is filling equal sides. Okay, so I have 15 ounces of tomato sauce, filling one fourth cans. How many cans will one, okay. Yeah, no, that's some multiplication going on there, so that's out. So there's our two. Mainly looking for our total and looking for something that's being divided up. All right, number five. All right, number five, as I'm looking at these stories and building equations, I'm gonna be looking for the group times the size of the group equals the total. That's my little thing I'm gonna keep an eye on a little bit. So Lena buys four pounds of blueberries, okay? Each batch of blueberry muffin uses two and a third pound of blueberries, yeah? And I'm trying to figure out how many batches. Okay, anytime I see batches, I know that's my group. So one of these two is my total. And whatever one is my total is gonna be my answer to my multiplication problem. So that's kind of important. Uh, which one's my total? Um, well, it's whatever I have. So what she has is Elena has four pounds of blueberries. So that's my total. And that must mean this is my size. And if I know those things, I can apply my equation and go to work. So my group, I don't know, times my size, which is two thirds, equals my total, which is four. And if I know my multiplication problem, I know my division problem, because whatever I start with, or my answer to my multiplication problem is what I start my division problem with. Four divided by two thirds equals G. All right, let's solve it. I'm gonna make these improper, okay? Because when I divide fractions, I need to have, like, everything's got to be a fraction. And I am going to keep the first number. I'm going to change division into multiplication. And I'm going to flip 2 thirds into 3 over 2. We call that a reciprocal. We're, gonna, we're finding it's a reciprocal, which is division. Or it means... <laughs> it means I flip the fraction. That's what a reciprocal is. Okay, 4 times 3 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2. All right. How many 2s are in 12? There are 6 of them. I can make 6 batches. Let me make sure that's what I'm looking for. How many batches? Yep. I solved that right. Let's continue. Next page. Hey, if you need to pause, take a break, you please do that. I kind of need a break, but I'm going to keep going anyway. All right, let's talk about this. Um, it's like all the equations. So there's more than one. Pay attention to that. All right, here's my sentence. I'm gonna take the sentence and I'm gonna turn it into numbers and letters and we have it all right here. How many groups, I have no idea, of, which is multiplication, three-fourths are in equals one. Look at this. We have our multiplication problem right there. Ding, 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 ding. Which means we can create our division problem. Starts with it, starts with it. One divided by three-fourths equals G. So let's see which one fits that. Do we have a one divided by three-fourths equals G? That's right here. Do we have a G times three-fourths equals one? That's right here. They used a question mark though. I use G. And you know what? That one's not gonna work. This one's not true. And that mixes the order. It's just B and C. That's good too. Oh, what multiplication problem is missing from this list? Oh, I know which one's missing. 
It's actually, um, it's this one. It's built from here. It's the keep change flip one. So I'm gonna keep this first one and I'm gonna change it to multiplication and then I'm gonna flip it. That also works. Ding, 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 ding. All right, let's move on. Number seven, um, a pencil six inches long, a crayon is two and two thirds inches. How many times as long as the crayon is the pencil? What? You know what's actually nice about this one is it can be easy, even though it doesn't look it. You just gotta just read the sentence and turn it into what you know. So let's do that. Let's just do that. How many times? I don't know how many times. So I'm gonna put a letter. I'm gonna put an X. As long as the crayon. Okay, I know the crayon. The crayon is two and two thirds. And I know the pencil. The pencil is six. And the word is right here means equals. And this is my multiplication problem. There's my multiplication problem. And if I know multiplication problem, I know, ding, 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 my division problem, which I'm going to do down here. So division starts with it. So 6 divided by 2 and 2 thirds equals x. Now I'm going to solve this. So I'm going to make it improper. So 6 over 1 divided by, OK. Um, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2. 6, 7 is 8. So it's 8 thirds. All right, now I'm going to keep the first number, change it to multiplication, and I'm going to flip the second number, the reciprocal. All right, 6 times 3 is 18. 8 times 1 is 8. Because when you're multiplying fractions, you just multiply across, multiply across, multiply numerators, multiply denominators. All right, let's keep one. 8 goes into 18 twice. 8 times 2 is 16 with 2 left over out of 8. Which I can reduce that. 2 eighths is equal to 1 fourth. And there's my answer. 2 and 1 fourth. Or I can leave it as 18. Yeah, I, I, actually 2 and 1 fourth is best. Let's solve this next one. How many times as long as the pencil as the crayon? Same thing. We're going to go ahead and do it. How many times? I don't know. I don't know. I do know the pencil, though. Pencil is six. The crayon is two and two thirds. The is is equals. There's my multiplication problem. Let's turn it into division. Two and two thirds divided by six equals x. Again, whatever I ended with is what I'm starting with. Now, I'm not going to keep change flip or any of that stuff yet. I got to get these into fractions. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2, so I have 8 thirds divided by 6 over 1. Now, I'm going to do a little keep. Keep that first number. Change and do a flipperooski. I'm not going to solve this. 8 times 1 is 8. 3 times 6 is 18. These can be reduced down. Um, let's see, 2 goes into both of them. 2 goes into 8 4 times, 2 goes into 18 9 times. All done. All done. But we're not done. No, no, we're not done. Keep it going. Yeah. Which one? Which questions? Okay, so we got an equation. I feel like we answered this one already. Oh, nope, it's a little different. So this guy right here is going to represent my total. It's going to represent what I have. This guy is going to represent either... a how many groups I can make, or the size of the group that I'm making. Let's see which one answers that. How many groups of four-fifths are in six? Yep, totally true. What is four-fifths of six? So that's this one. What is four-fifths of is times six? Hmm, nope. That's not what it's saying. How many six groups? No, no, no. The groups is the... No, no, no. Four-fifths is the groups. I can't remember. How many groups of six? Same thing. Nope. My group size is four-fifths. It's A. It's the only one that works. The rest of these are imposters. Do not work. Let's keep going. And you'll get better and better at that over time. Number 10. Curran wants to paint one wall in his room. I hope he got permission for that. He used one quart of paint, which covered five-eighths of the wall. OK, 
Again, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for group times size equals my total. Now, a little hint on these kind of things. If you can find your total, T-O-T-A, total, or what the person has, so check and see, what do they have? Then once you have this piece right here, then really the other piece fits into place. So in situations like this, I would first ask myself, what does Kieran have? So he used one quart of paint, which covered five eighths of the wall. Okay, five eighths of the wall isn't what he has. He used a quart of paint. That's what he has. This is his total. And then the five eighths of the wall, it could be, it's the size of the group. At this point, you can kind of just pick one because now you can build your equation. You know this and you know this, and this is the thing you're looking for. So let's build it. I'm going to write my multiplication problem. I'm going to use an X, though, for this one, okay? So I'm going to, let's see, so... Okay, I'm going to do group time... I'm not going to use group. I'm going to use an X. I'm going to use an X for this one. So 5 eighths times X equals my total, which is 1. There we go. Now I'm going to do my division problem. 1 divided by 5 eighths equals x. Now, 1 divided by x equals 5 eighths is also true, but this is the one that helps us. This is the one I'm going to use. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a little keep change flip. So, I'm going to keep the first number. I'm going to turn it into a fraction. I'll keep, change it to multiplication, and then I'm going to flip the second number. And here we go. 1 times 8 is 8. 1 times 5 is 5. 8 fifths. 5 goes into 8 once, 5, 6, 7, 8, so, and there's 3 left over, 3 fifths, 1 to 3 fifths quart. Ding, 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 ding. Predict if your answer will be larger or smaller than 1. Oh, we already solved it. It's bigger than 1. <laughs> That's funny. But let's look at this. Okay, so my first answer... Uh, my in my division problems because that's where I'm talking about. I'm talking about division. So in division, my first number is bigger than the second number, so my answer will be larger than one. And that's what happened. Go us. Okay, Lynn, she's still painting. Number two here. This is where I'm at. Lynn used one and a half gallons of paint. That seems important to cover three fifths of the room or wall in a room. Okay. Now does she have? A, Three-fifths of a room? No. Does she have one and a half gallons of paint? Yes. If that's what she has, that's my total. And this other thing, this three-fifths is either my size or my group, whatever. I'll call it my G. And I must be trying to find how many gallons, so I'm trying to find my, um, probably my size or something like that. But I'm going to build this now. My multiplication problem looks like this. Uh, three-fifths times something equals one and a half. And so my division problem is one and a half divided by three fifths equals x. Okay, I'm gonna make my prediction now. My, sec my first number is bigger than the second number, so that means my answer should be bigger than one. Let's check it out. All right, I'm gonna keep my, I gotta turn these into fractions. They already are fractions. No, not really, this one's first, it's a mixed number. Okay, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3, so 3 halves divided by 3 fifths. Now don't multiply yet, we've got to keep change flip. So keep this one, 3 halves. Got to change this one, we've got to flip this one. Alright, 3 times 5 is 15, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 goes into 15 twice with three left over out of six. Oh, it's two and a half, which is larger than one. Ding, 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 ding. It is larger, and this one is larger too. Nice. Let's move on, what do we got left? Oh, we got a couple left, got a couple goodies. Let's just roll. Oh, look at this, this is just math. We're just roll. we're just gonna dig through this math. First of all, I'm just gonna turn everything into fractions. Let's just do that, because we gotta have fractions. Fractions! All right, and I'm going to roll right into keep, change, and flip. So I've got 7 over 1, which I'm going to keep. I'm going to change it to multiplying, and I'm going to change 1 fifth to 5 over 1. It's a reciprocal. All right, 7 times 5, right, right? It's 35 over 1, which is 
35. And that makes sense. That's kind of saying like I have seven things and I'm dividing each piece into fifths. So I got a bunch of things. I got 35 pieces here. All right, let's do the next one. Keep, change, flip. 35 over two. 35 divided by two, so two goes into 35 17 times. I know, right? That's a bunch. And then I got one left over here. I have two. So 17 and a half. Yep, yep. Another way I kind of do this, and you can welcome to do this if you want to and keep track of it. I go, how many times does two go into three? It goes into it once. How many left over? One. And then I look at this as 15. How many times does two go into 15? Uh, seven times. And I get my one left over out of two. You're welcome to use that. If that was confusing, then maybe don't use that. But let's go with this one. Um, some might say, I solved this a different way. That's awesome. But really what we're practicing is dividing fractions with like using a rule. So that's what we're doing right here. So let's keep going. I'm using the reciprocal, which means flip it. Seven times five, still 35. One times four is four. So how many fours are in 35? There are eight of them. And how many do I have left over? I have three left over. Out of four. And I get that four from right here. Let's keep going. All right, six and one third. Yeah, I so need to turn that into an improper fraction. So six times three, um, six times five is 15. Another set, 16 is 18. And then one more is 19. So this is 19 thirds. All right, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it 19 thirds. I'm gonna change it. And I'm gonna flip one third into three over one. All right, 19 times three. Uh, I wasn't sure right away, so I did a little margin math on the side. I did like 19 times 3 and worked that out. Um, 3 times 9 is 27. 3 times 1 plus 2 is 57. So 57 over 3. All right, I'll show you that little ditty I did back there, and you can see if you like it or not. So it's kind of like division. So how many times does 3 go into 5? It goes into it once. How many left over? Two times. How many times does three go into 27? Nine times. Boom. Any left over? Nope. So it's done. Move along. All right, six and one third, we already know it's 19 thirds times one over six, which is six over one. 19 times six. I don't know what that was, but I did know 19 times three was 57, right? So I took that 57. That was three of them, and I want six of them, so I just doubled that batch. I doubled it because 57 is three of them, and if I double it, that should be six of them. So 57 doubled is 114 over three. Wow, that's a lot going on there, but we got this. All right, let's go to work. Um, how many times does three go into 11? Goes into it three times, because three times three is nine. How many left over? Two. And I look at 24 right there. Three goes into 24. Oh, eight times. Yeah, three times eight is 24. Done. No remainders. Um, six and one third. Yep. Has not changed. Still 19 thirds. Keep. Change. Flip it. Flip it. Okay, 19. I need nine 19s. I need so many of these ones. All right, so I went all the way back to my 57 again, because my 57 is three of them, and I need nine of them. So that's three, and I need three sets of it total. So three sets total of 57 should get me nine of them, right? Yeah, because there's one, and then two, three, yeah, I need three sets of it. So 57 times three, I end up with like 171. So many of them. What, no, no, not 170. 171 divided by 3. All right, let's see what we got. Um, 3 goes into 17 five times. 3 times 5 is 15. How many left over? 15. There's 2 left over. So how many times does 
Three going to 21. Oh, seven times. Dun. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Here we go. Number 13. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so these ones. I like these ones because you just got to plug the stuff in. You know the numbers, so just plug it in and make it happen. I know we got lots of students who will look at this stuff and be like, I don't know what's, how many times as tall as her baby brother is Elena. Seems super confusing and kind of like blech. You know, a little bit barfy, but you know what? It's, it's not bad because all you have to do is plug the stuff in you know. No big deal. So catch your breath, eat a couple gummy bears, and let's go to work. How many times? I don't know how many times. So let's give it an X. I don't know how many times. As tall as her baby brother. We do know the baby brother. One and seven eighths is, that's an equal sign, Elena, who is four and a half. And when we're talking about how many times, we're talking about multiplication... All right, there's my multiplication problem. If I know my multiplication problem, I'm gonna get to my division problem because that's what actually helps me solve this. So I'm gonna move it up here to my division problem. Four and a half divided by one and seven eighths equals X. Whew, a lot of steps, make it improper. Four times two is eight, plus one is nine. So I have nine halves divided by Okay, let's make this one M proper. Um, eight times one is eight, plus seven. I'm looking at like, what is that, 15 eighths? Yeah, 15 eighths. Oh yeah, don't stop, keep going. We're gonna keep nine halves, change it to multiplication, and we're gonna flip it. Reciprocal time. All right. Oh my goodness, holy beans, almost done. Nine times eight. 72, two times 15 is 30. Okay, 72 thirtieths. Okay, not, not the easiest. Oh yeah, actually, hey, wait a minute, this is not so bad. How many 30s are in 72? Are there like two of them? Yeah, there's totally two, because that gets me up to 60. And then I have like 60, or 72 minus 60 is 12. Oh yeah, easy peasy. And there's my 30. 12 out of 30. I can reduce that. Um, 2 and... I can cut both those in half. So 12 can be in half by 6. 30 can go in half by 15. Oh, 3 goes into both of those. All right. Um, 3 goes into 6 twice. 3 goes into 15 five times. Done. That was a lot of steps. Holy moly, a lot of steps. Not hard, though. Not hard. I'll, I'll give you, though, if you were, like, saying hey, that was tedious, a little bit annoying, I'll give you that. That's okay. But we can do it because we're amazing. Okay, what fraction of Elena... Is this our last... Okay, we're, we're getting close. We're getting really close. What fraction... I don't know what fraction of Elena's height, four and a half, is... Equal sign. Anytime you see that is, we've got an equal sign happening there. Uh, baby brother. So baby brother is one and seven eighths. Okay, let's do our division problem. One and seven eighths divided by four and a half equals X. All right, one and seven eighths, we already know um, from earlier. One and seven eighths is 15 eighths. And four and a half, we already know is nine halves from earlier. I'm going to keep 15 eighths. I'm going to change and I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip nine halves into two over a nine. I'm not gonna stop. Let's keep going. Um, let's see, 15 halves is third. And then why did I write 20? 15 halves is <laughs> 30 and eight ninths is 72. All right, this is smaller than one. Let me look back at my division problem and see if I can predict that. Oh, I can totally predict that. It should be smaller than one because my first number is smaller than the second number, so my answer should be smaller than one. Did that happen over here? Where's my division problem? Right here. My first number is bigger than my second number, so the answer should be bigger than one. And ding, 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 it was. All right, 30 over 72. I am going to divide both of those by three. 
So 3 goes into 30 10 times. 3 goes into 70, oh my goodness, like 24 times. Yep. Oh, I can cut both those in half. 10 goes in half by 5, and 24 in half by is 12. Done. Got to keep getting that smaller and smaller and smaller. Smaller and smaller. Simplify, simplify. Oh my goodness, we're on our last couple. Yay! What is the length of the longer side? I don't know. What are we talking about? Oh, a rectangle. Love a good rectangle. I'm going to start by making the rectangle. Okay, it gives me the area. So I'm going to write it on the inside, just so I don't get this confused. Six and three eighths. I'm going to pay attention that it's inches. I'm going to circle that, just so I get that in my answer. Short side is two and one eighth. And it looks like what we don't have is the length. So area is going to be length times width equals the area. So let's go ahead and solve this. Um, my length is two and one eighth. My width is, oh no, 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 no. Hold the phone, hold the phone. My length, I have no idea times my width, which is 2 and 1 eighth, equals my area, which is 6 and 3 eighths. There we go. So that means I can write my division problem. 6 and 3 eighths divided by 2 and 1 eighth is going to get me my length. Let's get this. Let's get it. 6 and 3 eighths, so 6 times 8 plus 3. That's 51 eighths. 2 times 8, 16, plus 1 is 17, which is 17 eighths. Whew. Let's do a little flip, a little change, a little flip. Or we got a couple options. Okay, right now we could keep changing flip, but they do have common denominators. So I could do this. I could say I have 50, I have 51 eighths, and I'm trying to figure out how many 17s are in it. How many 17s are in 51? Um, I could guess. 17 times 2 is, that's 14, 34. And then one more. It might be one more. I'm going to do a little margin of math here. Okay, 7 times 3, 14, 21, 3, 4. Oh, it's, oh, the answer, the answer is 3. All right. If I want to do a keep change flip, which I can do right here in a different color so you keep track of it. If I'm going to keep change flip, I'm going to do 51, keep it, change it, flip it. Okay, these numbers are going to get a little bit big, but we can handle it. 51 times 8. If you do a little bit on the side, a margin math, you end up with 408, or 408. 8 times 17 is 136. Got to got some big numbers here. But 136 times 3 is 408, so we end up with the same answer, 3. Both of them work. If you like this better, you're welcome to go back and re-listen to see what I did. All right? If they do have common denominators, you can look at what I have and how many in a group. And that's kind of what I did here. That's what I did there. Okay, what's the next one? Volume of a rectangular prism. All right. Do I need to draw the rectangular prism? I can. Let's do that. Um, it's one and a half meters. Let's not draw with that. Not helpful. One and a half meters by two and a half meters by three meters. That's no way that's three. Okay, so if I'm gonna find volume, volume is length times width times height. It is, I promise. We know them all. So I just need to multiply them. And I can multiply them in any order I want because that's the way multiplication works. So two and a half times one and a half times three. Let's get these nice and improper fractions. Two times two is four plus one, so I have five halves times. So three halves times three over one. Now the cool thing about multiplying is I can just multiply all the way across. Five times three times three, and five times three is 15. 15 times three is 45. And then multiply the bottom. Two times two is four. Four times one is four. So how many fours are in 45? I don't know. Let's, let's see what happens. Four goes into four once. Nothing left over. 
Four goes into five once. I have one left over out of the four. It's 11 and one fourth. And I got this four from here. One left, the finale. This is so the finale. Oh yes, you did it. Super proud of you. You should quick run around the kitchen table. Go, 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 run, run, run. Come back, no, 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 come back, come back, come back. Okay, let's go back to work. That's a big kitchen table. You're gonna knock something over. You're gonna get in trouble, so don't do that. Just sit back down, settle down, catch your breath. Let's do this. A lemon has about one eighth cup of juice. And how many lemons are needed to make one and a half cups of juice? All right, we gotta figure this out. How many lemons are needed to make one and a half cups of juice? All right, so let's kind of figure out what my total is. A lemon has this. So a lemon has that amount. How many lemons do I need? Kind of sounds like groups. Kind of trying to find, like, I'm trying to find my groups, possibly. Um, one eighth kind of seems like my size because I'm trying to get a total of one and a half. Kind of look like what's happening here. So if it is groups times size equals total, then I'm looking at, I'm looking for something that says groups times one eighth equals one and a half. And then my division should be one and a half divided by one eighth equals G or X or something like that. Do you have anything that looks, oh yeah, eight, look at this. It's right there. Ding, 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 ding. Let's see if we can find this guy. Something times one eighth equals one half. Oh, found it. Found it. Did you find it? Found it. Right here. That's the one. You know what also works? There's another one that works too that's not on here. You could also do one eighth times G or X equals one and a half. That also works. You could also take this guy. Well, there's another one. Yes, there's another one. You could take this guy and do our keep change flip. Let me let me show you. I could keep this one, change it to multiplying, and then flip it. So an answer that would also work is one and a half times eight. Is that one of the choices? It's not, but this would also be true. And this would also be, so there's really four of them, but they only gave you two. Yikes, that's awesome. Did it, you did it. Way to go you, yay. All right, make sure you go back and study, review anything you need to, um, prepare yourself, make sure you get a good night's sleep, drink a lot of water, that's like instant brain juice. Awesome, very good. I'm gonna dress up as a panda and run through the forest and just see if I, see what happens. See if I can make some 